So we have a right triangle, sine theta is y divided by r, cosine is x divided by r, and tangent is y over x, and cotangent is x divided by y. We have some observations, some important observations. One of them is, if I take sine and raise it to the second power, add it to cosine raised to the second power, the outcome is always one. Let us put this in this box and then write a proof down here. When you're having relations like this, some quantity on the left, some quantity on the right, you can either start from left to right or right to left. So of course it's easier to start from left to right because on the right hand side, I only have one. From left hand side, I'm going to write down sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta. Use the definitions to simplify. So let us use the definitions. Sine theta is y divided by r. Sine theta is y divided by r. So if I raise both sides to the second power, it becomes raise both sides to the second power. Okay, let's see. I raise left hand side to the second, right hand side to the second. So on the left hand side, I have sine theta raised to the second power. For simplicity, I'm going to write it as sine to the second power of theta. So sine theta raised to the second in simplified nice form is sine to the second theta. This guy becomes y over r times y over r or y squared over r squared. So this is my sine squared. My sine squared is nothing but y squared over r squared. Plus, now I need to raise cosine to the second power. Definition of cosine is x over r. Cosine theta is x over r. To create cosine squared, I'm going to raise both sides to the second power. So cosine theta to the second is equal to x divided by r to the second. Again, for simplicity, I'm going to write it as cosine to the second power of theta, which is x squared over r squared. I'm going to copy this guy down here. This is x squared over r squared. Okay. Now take the common denominator. Take the common denominator, which is r squared. So this guy is equal to I'm going to write down one denominator and add the numerators, y squared plus x squared. Well, what was the definition of y squared plus x squared? Remember that r was defined as square root of x squared plus y squared, or r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So, it means that the numerator and the denominator are the same thing. This is r squared over r squared or nothing but one. From the left hand side, 
I got to the right hand side, which is one. Whenever you add sine squared and cosine squared, the outcome is always simplified to one. So in this animation, you're going to see why the Pythagorean theorem is true. So here you have a right triangle, all right? This is, for example, your y, and this is your x. So x squared, it means that you are finding the area of this square here. So this is your x squared, or the area of this square. This is your y, and y squared is the area of this square here. Pythagorean theorem says, hey, the area of this square plus the area of this square is equal to the area of this bigger square here. This is your r, and this is r squared, the area of this square here. Now, let us watch how it happens. As you can see, those two areas combined give you the area of this bigger square. So how to visualize Pythagorean theorem? This is the nice visualization of Pythagorean theorem. Again, the area of that big square, which is R squared, and we divide it up into the sum of X squared and Y squared. Isn't that fun? Having fun with animations. <laughs> yeah, it is cool. Very good. So this is the relation between R squared, X squared, and Y squared. From the right triangle, R squared is equal to X squared plus Y squared. Again, X squared, it means that you have this area, X times X. This is the area that you have here, X squared. And Y squared is this area here. This is y squared. And then if you add these two areas, x squared plus y squared is equal to the area on this side, which is much more easier to remember. You keep seeing these nice animations, these videos, but when you're exactly looking for them to show it to your students, you don't know where they disappear. R squared. Another proof for you. Now let's take a look at some graphs. So suppose I have the graph of sine x. Okay, sine x, super easy to analyze. Now this is the graph of sine x squared. Guys, the exponent belongs to x. Now I'm going to graph sine to the power two of x. These are all different graphs with different behaviors. The red one is your sine function. The purple one is sine x squared. See the behavior is so weird. Sine to the power two. So this exponent belongs to the sine function. And this is this black function that you can see is just on top of x-axis. So here, if I just eliminate sine x, this is sine x squared. This is your function, the purple function. But sine to the power 2 is going to be this black function on top of x-axis. Now, know the difference between this exponent. If you raise x to power 2, 
It's different from raising your function sine to power two. These are the difference between these. So let me specify them all here. When you are working with sine function, you either have your sine, sine x, which can be written as sine of x. You also have sine of x to the power two, or you can write it as a sine x squared. Well, with this logic, you say, hey, I'm going to have sine x cubed, of course. I'm going to have sine x to the fourth, of course. Why not? You're changing your x variable. You're giving this different exponent. So with this logic, you might say, hey, what about sine of square root of x? Of course, these are all different functions that you can create. You're the mathematician. You do not have any limit. You do not have any uh, constraint. You can build any function that you like. And another one that you're going to talk about is having sine multiplied by itself. Sine x times sine x, which is sine to the second power of x. This two on the exponent of sine means that you multiply sine by itself two times. So with the same logic, you might say, hey, I want to build sine to the third power, which is sine x times sine x times sine x. Of course, why not? You can also create square root of sine x. Anything is possible in math world. As long as you follow the definition, you distinguish between these functions, different functions, you are absolutely fine. Very good. Another identity for you. So now we're going to prove that. One plus tangent squared is secant squared. So again, recall that we started by having a right triangle, theta, x, y, r, and sine theta is y over r, cosine theta is x over r, tangent theta is y over x, and cotangent theta is x over y. We have another identity. This identity, trick identity, says, well, one plus tangent squared of theta is equal to secant squared of theta. So one plus tangent squared of theta is always secant squared. So it means that if you have a trick expression and the question says, hey, simplify one plus tangent squared, you can quickly write secant squared instead of it. Okay, let's start the proof. First of all, put that in a box because we need to memorize this, it is important. Now for the proof from left to right, from left hand side. Left hand side is one plus tangent squared, am I right? So one plus tangent squared of theta. Okay, one is one, plus is plus. Tangent squared, what is tangent squared? Remember tangent of theta is y divided by x. So when we are saying that tangent squared, it means that we are raising both sides to the second power. Tangent squared of theta is y squared divided by x squared. So I'm going to take this and substitute that for tangent squared. I get one plus y squared over x squared. Now take the common denominator. Take the common denominator. Common 
common denominator. The common denominator, this guy is just one divided by one. The denominator it has is just one, one over one plus y squared over x squared. All right, so what should I do? I should multiply the numerator and the denominator by x squared. So this guy becomes one times x squared, one times x squared. So the first fraction is nothing but x squared over x squared plus we copy down the second fraction y squared divided by x squared. Well, they have the same denominator. We're going to write down one denominator and add the numerators x squared plus y squared. But what is x squared plus y squared? x squared plus y squared by Pythagorean theorem is r squared and on the denominator we have x squared. But what is this? This is equal to 1 divided by x squared over r squared. Or we can say that, hey, this is just r divided by x squared. But what is r divided by x? Again, if I flip cosine, I get secant of theta, which is r over x. This is how we define secant. So I have my secant to the power 2. This becomes secant to the power 2 of theta, which is my right and side. Very good. Another one. Now we're going to prove that one plus cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared. So 1 plus cotangent squared of theta is equal to cosecant squared of theta. Very well. Proof. Let us show that left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So left-hand side, it's 1 plus cotangent squared of theta. But what is the definition of cotangent? Cotangent of theta is x divided by y. So cotangent squared of theta becomes x squared over y squared. So this guy becomes 1 plus x squared over y squared. The same process. You need to take common denominators between these two. Common denominator. Now, the common denominator must be y squared, am I right? So here you have 1 over 1 plus x squared over y squared, which is x squared divided by uh, y squared divided by y squared plus x squared divided by y squared. The common denominator is y squared, so this guy becomes y squared and y squared plus x squared. And we know that based on the definition of Pythagorean theorem, this is nothing but r squared over y squared. So this guy becomes r over y to the second power. But what is r over y? If I flip sign, I define cosecant of theta, which is r over y. So I have r over y, which is defined as cosecant. So we get cosecant to the second power of theta, which is my right hand side. Left hand side is equal to the right hand side. 